a beautiful day as always to be with you here in the house of the Lord. If you would now bow your heads with me as we invite the Lord to inhabit our praises together today. Gracious God, we thank you for your presence in our lives. Help us to notice you this morning. Give us ears to hear you, eyes to see you, minds and hearts that are open to hear your word and your message to us today. We pray that you would take this time and space and make them a sacred time and space where we may encounter you fully. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we come to this time of prayer, I would like to point out we made a quarter page flyer in full color, but it is for you, uh, not to give away to a friend today. Uh, for our online friends, don't worry, we have one for you too. Uh, we're putting them up on the screen. All of them are different, um, but all of them pertain to our upcoming Vacation Bible School. So if you would uh, take one of these with you today um, as we take a moment to pray over all that God is going to do in this upcoming week, um, as we pray for the children who will come here, for the staff and the volunteers who are working here, uh, for all of the building and the decorations and the supplies to come into place, and for all of the families in our community that will be touched by the ministry here. So if you would, as we come to this time of prayer, I'm going to give us just a few moments of silence uh, for you to pray individually over uh, whatever card you got on your seat today. So let us go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we lift up today all of the children who will be coming to our Vacation Bible School this upcoming week. We pray uh, for the ones who have signed up already and the ones who will not sign up until the last minute tomorrow. We pray for uh, the parents who will be bringing them. We pray for the volunteers who will be here uh, early to set up and late to tear down. We pray for those who are staying today to help set up. We pray for all of those who have put in hours. God, we pray for those who are praying for the VBS this week, that they would be encouraged and reminded uh, to seek you first in all things. But most of all, God, we pray that this would be an experience for everyone who comes, for everyone who is touched by this VBS to know you and to feel your love in their lives. God, we lift up uh, all of the many prayer requests of our church family. We lift up um, our church. We lift up the families that are represented here, both here in person and online. Lord, we lift up uh, Springfield today, our sister church, as they celebrate their homecoming. Uh, we pray that that would be a successful and wonderful time for them. God, we lift up the mission trip and all that you have for the mission team to do there. We know that you have prepared good works in advance, um, and so God, we pray for that. We pray for those uh, who are preparing to go, that you would prepare their hearts to serve you wholly and completely. Uh, Lord, we lift up uh, those in our church who are in need of a healing touch. Uh, we lift up the continued healing uh, of John Hafner. Uh, we lift up those on our long-term prayer list. Uh, we lift up all of those prayers that uh, we speak out loud, but also those that we are not sure how to say out loud, those that we keep uh, close to our hearts. God, thank you that you hear them, that you know us, that we can come to you with anything, and that we can be assured that you hear us and that you love us. And so, God, we lift them up to you, and we thank you when we don't have the words that you gave us the words so long ago when your son prayed. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I'd like to invite our children to come forward for a special time of worship just for them today.
Yeah, I did. Okay. Well, so here is my question for y'all this morning. You know I always have a question for you. My question for you this morning is, where have you seen God in your life this week? Where have you seen God moving? Where have you felt God in your life? So, Jay, you had a really good answer for his service. Do you want to share it with second service? Um, sure. Okay, you got to hold the mic up. Uh, when I was at the movies watching Jurassic Park, it was kind of scary, so Jesus came to help me. Okay, watching a scary movie and Jesus came to comfort you. Jesus is always there when we're scared, huh? We can always cry out to Jesus if we're scared. What else? Thomas, what about a, a good God moment for you this week? What's something that, a place that you saw God moving that you knew, knew God was there? Well, well, one time at the beach, I just saw tons of big crabs. And, wow. and God probably, it's probably something to do with God. I have no idea what, but yeah. <laughs> I would agree. When you see something really cool in nature like that, yeah, it's I probably saw, God. I saw, I saw two crabs fighting, oh which was awesome. I <laughs> bet that was pretty cool to see. All right, does anyone else have a fun God moment that they wanted to share about a place that you saw God? Zeb, where did you see God? I don't know. You don't know? You no. forgot? Okay. I just you have another answer, Jay? What's another place you saw God? I think chairs are God. Chairs are God. How? Ex explain a little further. I'm very curious. I think everything is God. You know what? That is extremely deep. Yes, sir. <laughs> everything is God. That God is everywhere, right? Yes. So is there anywhere we can go? Is there anywhere we can go that God doesn't love us and want to be with us? Or is God everywhere? Everywhere. Everywhere. And is God. is God there if we need him every time? Judah. So if Judah, if you get scared or hurt or worried, who can you always, always, always call out to that will always, always, always be there for you? Because he's everywhere, right? God. Absolutely. Okay. Jesus. Good job, guys. All right. So would you guys pray with me this morning? Bow your heads. Close your eyes. And let's pray. Dear Jesus. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for being everywhere and always being there for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You guys can go back to your seats. Thank you so much, guys. Before we encounter the scripture today, uh, would you pray with me a prayer of illumination um, that we can say all together as we uh, encounter God's word to pray that our hearts and our minds would be open to receive it today. Dear Lord, illuminate this day and enlighten us as we seek to know you through your word. May we be led by your light so our hearts may be opened to your word. We pray that we receive every word you speak to us today. Amen. Our story today comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, starting in verse 13. Uh, if you have been on a walk to Emmaus, uh, this will be a very familiar text to you as it is about the walk to Emmaus. If you have not been on one, uh, ask someone who has gone uh, how you can go on the next one. It is a very valuable retreat. Let us read. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still and looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, what things? They replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word, before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. 
Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning in Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, the Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the word of God for the people of God. I have always really enjoyed this post-resurrection story. I think that I really love the fact that Jesus just came and joined in on a conversation. He's almost a little bit snarky. He knows what they're talking about, and he goes, Hey, what, what you talking about, guys? Tell, tell me about that Jesus of Nazareth guy that you guys are talking about. I think it's really neat that he just meets Cleopas and his friend on the road where they are, meets them where they are at, and travels the road with them, and then explains the scriptures to them. And I think that it pairs really well with our Summer of Rock song today. Um, I don't think technically that today's song is a rock song. It's more of a pop song, but, but I do think it's a beautiful song. Our song is James Taylor's You've Got a Friend. This song was uh, the biggest and most well-known hit for the then 23-year-old James Taylor who recorded it. It's his only number one song in America. It was the very first single off of his third album. And in 1971, it won the Grammy Award for Best Male Pop Vocalist. The song also won Song of the Year. But that award does not go to James Taylor. The award for Song of the Year goes to the writer, who is Carole King. So according to James, Carole King wrote this song in response to one of his earlier songs. In 1970, James Taylor wrote Fire and Rain. And in that song, he says, I've seen lonely times when I could not find a friend. And so in response to that lyric, Carole King wrote, you've got a friend. You've got a friend right here. You're not alone. She wrote the lyric. She said, when you're down and troubled and you need a helping hand and nothing Nothing is going right. Close your eyes and think of me, and soon I will be there to brighten up even your darkest night. The disciples who were walking on this road to Emmaus were in their darkest night. They had seen Jesus crucified. They did not know what was going to happen next. They were so wrapped up in their own grief and their own confusion that they didn't even recognize when Jesus showed up right next to them. And I've always wondered about this text that says, uh, starting in verse 15, <clears throat> excuse me, where it says, uh, while they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. I think Jesus often likes to surprise us, but I always wonder uh, if it wasn't just their own distractions, if they weren't just wrapped up in their own confusion about what was supposed to have happened. They thought that the redemption of Israel by the Messiah was supposed to happen a different way, and then it didn't. We also 
get wrapped up and how we think God is supposed to be moving in our lives or is supposed to be moving in the world so much so that we sometimes miss the ways that God is actually moving in the world, that way that God is actually working in our own lives. We like to listen to our own interpretation of things. We like to uh, interpret scripture the only way that we want to, right? Um, instead of necessarily listening to God's interpretation, like Jesus gave them. We like to listen to people who agree with us and are going to reaffirm our own beliefs that we've given ourselves. We like to listen to the news stations that reaffirm the things that we want to believe already, and we don't like to listen to those other news stations that don't, that say something different. We like an echoing chamber much more than truth speakers sometimes. And I am just as guilty of this. Um, I like to be told that I'm right. You can ask my husband how much I like to be told that I'm wrong. He will laugh at you um, because, yes, I can be very stubborn too. But how often, like these disciples walking on the road to Emmaus, do we get caught up in our own ways, in our own opinions, in our own uh reckonings of how we think things should happen, that we fail to realize where God is moving right there alongside of us. Jesus is always right there alongside of us. In times of trouble, all we have to do is cry out to him, and scripture tells us that Jesus will be there. Scripture tells us that Jesus sticks to us closer than a brother, and James Taylor's song, the verse of it says, you just call out my name, and you know wherever I am, I'll come running to see you again. God will be there again. All we have to do is call on the name of Jesus, and he will be right there with us, walking alongside us. It doesn't matter if we take a thousand steps away from God. We only have to ever take one step back, and Jesus will be right there with us. God is with us. Of all of the conversations that are recorded uh, from Jesus in Scripture, I wish that this one had been recorded word for word. Um, this next one where he has this conversation along the road to Emmaus, we don't get the full accounting here of all that Jesus says to them, but we do know that. Um, in verse 27, he says, Beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all of the Scriptures. How amazing would it have been to walk along with Jesus and hear Jesus going through the Old Testament prophets, going through the old laws and pointing to every reference to the prophecies about him and then showing the fulfillment of all of those prophecies in the person of Jesus. And still, even after this had been opened up to Cleopas and his friend, Hearing all of these things directly from Jesus, they didn't yet recognize Jesus in their company. There was still one more step that needed to happen. That information had to go from the head to the heart. Some people say that that's the longest distance in the world between our brains and our hearts. Because we can know a thing and not feel a thing. We may know it, but we may not recognize it as Christ in our lives. We might not truly understand it until we feel it, until we believe it. It was not until the breaking of bread together that they truly knew that Jesus was there. There's something very sacred about breaking bread together. There's something really special that happens when you sit down and you have a meal with someone, whether it is a total stranger, whether it is someone who agrees with you or disagrees with you, whether it is your own family. I think it is very important that we take time to sit down and break bread together and often. The theologian Henry Nouwen said, when we break bread and we give it to each other, fear vanishes and God becomes very close. I do believe that we are able to see things more clearly when we pause and we break bread together. When we pause and break bread with Jesus, why I think it's so important uh, that we do it here at church, but that we do it all the time. And I think that it's important that every voice and perspective is invited to the table so that we may all share together, so that all may be uh, invited to God's table to break bread together. 
This is how we learn to recognize God in the world. This is where our eyes are opened. This is how we can set aside uh, preconceived notions, presuppositions, biases that we have. It's how we can discover what God is actually doing, not what we think God should be doing in the world. We can notice where God is already moving in our lives. And so many people, when they are going through tough times or when they don't feel like God is close to them and they, they wonder, you know, what is this whole religion thing and is this really worth it and is God really moving in my life and is there really a God? They tell me, but I don't, I don't feel God. I don't see God. I don't, I don't see what God is doing in our lives. And so, friends, I'm here to tell you that it takes practice to see what God is doing. It takes practice to lay aside ourselves and make room for God, to notice what God is doing in our lives. It's a skill that has to be honed so that we can know when we go to the movie theater and see a scary movie that God is with us there to comfort us. When we see something amazing in nature like crabs fighting, we can know that God is part of the awesomeness that we see in nature. It's a skill that we have to sit down, take time to break bread with God, to recognize God in our lives. That our friend Jesus is always there. We just have to learn to open our eyes and see it. Next week at Vacation Bible School, and I'm bringing it up a lot today. It's been on my brain this week. Can you tell? <laughs> um, we are having cactuses everywhere because the theme is you know, desert and cactus and all of those things. And so the stage will be full of paper and plastic and paper mache cactuses, cacti, and they will all be just regular cactus. But we're going to teach the kids throughout the week um, to look for God sightings, to look for those moments, to see with the eyes that are searching for Christ. And so each time that they do, we're going to give them an opportunity to share those God moments, those God sightings with us. And when they do, they'll get a cactus blossom, and they'll get to come up and put it on the cactus as a physical reminder that God is moving in the world. And so the hope is that by the end of the week, we'll have a stage full of blooming cactuses, cacti, um, that it will all be a beautiful rainbow of all of these examples from all of these children and adults who have come to participate, who have taken the time to practice seeing God in their lives, seeing where God is moving in their lives. So friends, what are your cactus blossoms this week? Where have you seen God move? Where have you set aside yourself to make more room for the Holy Spirit, to see where God is moving lately? Like Cleopas and his friend on the road to Emmaus, they recognized after the fact that as Jesus had been walking alongside them, as Jesus had been opening up the scriptures to them, that they felt their hearts burning inside of them that they felt something different, though they couldn't quite name it at the time until after they realized it was Jesus and their eyes were opened. John Wesley, during his Aldersgate experience, also described his heart as being strangely warmed, that burning in your heart. Where have you noticed God moving? Where has your heart been strangely warmed lately? Where have you been in need of a friend, been in need of a helping hand, that God showed up? When you feel yourself in a season of doubt, if you've hit a plateau in your faith journey, if you feel yourself in the valleys and the dark places, look for those cactus blossoms. Look for those God sightings. Go back to the ones where you heard and knew before, where you saw, where you felt your heart strangely warmed. Realize that your friend is already with you, walking alongside you. You just need to open up your eyes to see. And so as I invite the band to come back up, would you pray with me that we would have eyes opened this week to see the movement of the Holy Spirit? Let us pray. God, we come before you in need of fresh eyes, in need of a fresh renewing of our spirit so that we may see you, so that we may recognize you when you show up. Help us to have eyes that would see those God sightings, those cactus blossoms, God, that they would see all of the many wondrous ways that you are moving in the world. Help us to recognize them, help us to appreciate them, and help us to be a part of what you are doing here on earth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And with that, I give you, we've got, we've got a friend, you've got a friend by James Taylor.
if you would stand and sing with us. body of Christ as we leave with a blessing. God, we pray that you would give us fresh eyes to see your movement in the world and to realize that no matter where life takes us, that we've got a friend in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Go in peace. Oh, yeah.
of friends.